Hey cats, it's Ed Berger, Midsole Man. Today, I'm looking at the best running shoes I've ever reviewed on the channel. So I've done about a thousand videos or so on the channel now. There have been some superb shoes that have come through the studio that I've looked at under the microscope. I've decided to dip into the archives and pull out some of the best reviewed models ever, some of the greatest running shoes that I've acquired, and I'm gonna tell you why. Welcome back to the channel people, do hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. Also drop us a super thanks to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. So today I have for you in no particular order the greatest running shoes ever reviewed on the channel. Loads to get through so let's get to it. First up has got to be the Gakuso Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Now just alone the looks of this shoe, absolute fire, beautiful colours stuff you don't normally see perhaps on a running shoe it still to this day is one of the most amazing running shoes i've got in the collection i'm not entirely sure that i would take it out for a very fast race effort but it's still okay for training this had the same midsole and outsole unit as the standard vaporfly four percent fly knit but gakuso switched up some of the elements here in the upper they actually moved the heel counter to the outside of the heel and the actual fly knit material here in the toe box felt a little bit more stretchy perhaps gave you a little bit more room in terms of height to the toe box just change the fit and the lockdown of the shoe in a positive way a little bit more accommodating perhaps but this shoe was absolutely incredible on foot i remember running some fast 5ks in this one back in 2019 i wish they would reignite the collaboration that they had with this brand perhaps do a new version of the vaporfly 3 just use the same colors Give us more of this because this is one of the most beautiful running shoes I've got in the collection. So that starts us off. Let's get to the next one. The Pegasus Turbo 2 from Nike is another model that they've yet to replace or improve upon. I had absolutely no issues with the upper here. I had a very strange kind of lacing arrangement with the eyelets. Why Nike don't move back to this, I don't know. It worked and it worked very, very well. It kind of like latched you down and sort of wrapped your foot down on top of the midsole and that's exactly what you wanted because you had that ace combo of zoom x and react here now some people did have a problem with that where they had the two foams separating i had quite a few pairs of these and i didn't find any of that at all in fact i know kev next percent burton he's got loads and loads of pairs of these and i don't think he had anything like that at all and he did hundreds and hundreds of miles in his pegasus turbo 2s though i would suggest it was a shoe for me at least for shorter distances up to about 10 miles i mean 10 miles is actually quite a distance for some people but for me i found that the zoom x started to bottom out a little bit around then since that point we've had the next nature version of the pegasus turbo which isn't really like this shoe at all it's just a poor facsimile of the original material so i've kept this in the collection just for old time's sake i haven't run in it for a while let's just pray we get a new update or a retro of this shoe at some point in the near future and nike use some better glue so pegasus turbo 2 let's hope it comes back don't worry, this isn't going to be a Nike fest. It just turns out that some of the best running shoes in the early days of the channel were from Nike. I think that's a bit of a commentary about where we are now in 2023. Here I have the Alpha Fly Next Percent. I was very lucky to get this shoe way before everybody else. The sheer joy of picking it up was just unmeasurable. Though I did have a slight episode in terms of my heart when I realized the delivery driver had left it in a recycling box outside the house i did find it though and all was good this was a game-changing shoe really and it's still one of the most bizarre items i've got in the running shoe collection still feels pretty decent the actual midsole material seems to have hold up all right maybe a little bit sticky i'm not sure the softer foams will hold up as well over time we'll have to see i guess i mean i could try running in it now and see what happens maybe once it's dried out because it's chucking around with rain out there but the original pressing i have to say was absolutely awesome this sort of darker colorway well you just don't really get that many darker colorways in race shoes I always seem to make them very bright this one almost sort of unassuming a little bit like kit from Knight Rider. The after dinner mint version though is right up there for me. I always remember when people first saw that they got these huge AirPods, you know, underneath the foot. I guess people suggesting it's almost like cheating or something, the stack height as well. But now we've got much more than this in some of the shoes. So almost makes the Alpha Fly seem every day, I suppose. 
Back in July 2020, I was lucky enough to review the Saucony Endorphin Speed, the original version. This again was a bit of a game-changing shoe, which brought the Piva midsole material to the masses, of course, complete with its nylon plate. A little less rigid than the Pro version, this meant that you could perhaps use the Endorphin Speed on a slightly more daily basis. Didn't feel too jarring, I suppose, if you're gonna run at slower speeds. A low weight and it's up for it race-like feel. It created a whole new category of shoe that could be used in training, but also for racing too. I think they pitched it at just about the right price as well to make it very attractive for people. I can just remember that shoe clearing up. There were loads and loads of pairs of it. I do remember Kafuzi running some sort of, you know, best time, you know, trail race or something from one place to another in the lockdown. I think he wore the endorphin speed then. That just goes to show how versatile a shoe it was. So a really groundbreaking option there and one of the best shoes I've reviewed on the channel, it has to be said, the endorphin speed original. I can't find this shoe at the moment. It's completely lost the uh, Adi Zero Adios Pro. I grabbed that back in September of 2020 and I initially didn't like it at all. It was just awful one foot. I, I didn't like it. Too firm, just not really very forgiving. It felt a bit clunky, but it then proved to be one of the best super shoes for me, helping me to a one hour 31 time trial over the half marathon distance and a PR on the 10K distance too. The foam just needed some time really to break in and soften up. And once it did, it became a superb shoe. Brilliant lockdown from the upper. I think it was like a cellar mesh material. Though it was a little heavier than some of the other super shoes at the time, it was very, very stable. Very forgiving and you got some real drive there from those Adidas energy rods. So I think in terms of the best shoes I've ever reviewed, that's probably right up there, the Adi Zero Adios Pro. Now, recently I've reviewed the Rocket X2 from Hoka. Really love that shoe. Super soft, just super forgiving at any pace. You can really turn up the cadence though and fly along if you want to. Way back though, I did review the Rocket X, that original version I really enjoyed as well. One of the best Hoka shoes of that period, though I'd say the similarities between the Rocket X and the 2 are very, very small. I found the Rocket X a way better shoe than the Carbon X, which just did nothing for me at all. I think Hoka marketed the Rocket X as like a half marathon, marathon based shoe, but it never really really grabbed the attention of the running market all that much, which is sad really because it's one of their best shoes. Loads of them still around a discount, so yeah, if you want to pick up a piece of the past, still nice, nimble and propulsive shoe, Rocket X is where it's at. I did grab the Vaporfly Next Percent when it did initially release and ran some very fast 5Ks in this one, though I think the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 actually worked a little bit better for me. It saw me repeat that one hour 31 half marathon time in 2021, and it was one of the better shoes that I've bought over the course of that year. The prototype version of that shoe, which is still in the collection, is one that I utilize for the Bristol Half Marathon, one of my most memorable races, I suppose. I just missed out on my sub 130 goal there, just outside. I found it had great grip and the midsole propulsion was just awesome. Whilst it lasted, I suppose, that it did tend to deaden off after about 100, 150 miles. Amazingly, the white colorway of that Proto seemed to get better and better the more I used it. Though it's not all about max cushion shoes on the channel, I really did enjoy the Adi Zero Adios 6 from Adidas. I got hold of that in June 2021 and it represented one of the best of those old school style shoes, which has less of the extravagant width, which started becoming a big trend. And you kind of need more reliance on good form with this type of shoe from Adidas, as it's somewhat firmer underfoot. You want to make sure you land on that mid to forefoot area where you've got the Light Strike Pro. It was a great price on the Adios 6 as well, about £120, which brings it more into a sort of daily category. It's not that far from something like the Pegasus from Nike. It was really hard not to enjoy those for some faster paced running. Perhaps if you're doing some steady tempo type work, the Adios 6 was a real winner. It just showed me how great light strike pro could be if you utilize it in the right way another shoe that showed the way as to how certain super foams could be used was the vomero 16. it goes to show a testament to this shoe they're still selling it two years on from release 
it's still an absolutely worthy inclusion in any running shoe rotation. I think it's probably the best non-race shoe application of ZoomX that I've seen so far, where the foam just doesn't capitulate and start to tear up. Really nice stable feel in the Vomero 16, and you got that pot from the Zoom Air unit that's in the forefoot of the shoe. As underrated a shoe as you will see from the swoosh brand and the best daily option that they've still got in their catalogue now in August 2023. Can't believe it. Two years and they still haven't updated it. There's a 17, but Heaven knows when it's going to drop. Next up's got to be the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. Another underrated shoe, which has a great midsole feel. A little like the Saucony Endorphin Speed Original did. It's gone under the radar. It's been completely missed by loads and loads of people. Wonderfully stable and with lots of nitrogen infused P-backs in that midsole. The classic Puma grip on the outsole and a waffer thin upper as well. This original version of the Deviate Nitro Elite is just so good. There were a few others that they released, but this SP version, yeah, really hit the mark. I think this and the Deviate Nitro Elite 2 are just vastly overlooked. You should endeavor to try them out if you can. Certainly one of the best I've reviewed on the channel. It just had a great all-round profile. Great outsole grip, really usable in terms of the midsole, and super light upper as well. You could just use it anytime dries out super quick too. The Takumi Sen 8 is still one of my favorite shoes of the last few years. Super light, super grippy, and a mega shoe that's just up to anything really, even a half marathon if you wanted to do that. Adidas race shoes are so good recently that they do give some serious competition to Nike, Asics, and Puma options. The Sen 9 appears to be a very simple upper change there, but you're getting the same great midsole and outsole. So I don't think you should overlook that one either if you're sort of on the fence there's some great deals on the Sen 9 around about now about 100 pounds or something it's much more than half of an adios pro 2 or 3 very much its own shoe with a different upper fit and feel it's just superb design brilliance from the three stripe shoe masters uh, another shoe here that's just as relevant about a year on from when i reviewed it gotta be the metaspeed sky plus from asics one of my absolute favorites and it's helped me to some very fast 10ks over at the asics london 10k insane grip and awesome lightness of the shoe overall asics sort of putting all of the weight into that midsole and it's a simpler upper as you will ever see no bells and whistles it just really latches the foot down on top of that midsole i think it's probably one of my most prized possessions in the running shoe rotation at this time unmatched for my running style especially across that 6.2 mile distance and finally you can pick it up on a discount too the asics metaspeed sky plus in october of 2022 i reviewed the adi zero primex strung if you love this channel and watch all my videos you will know that i love that shoe fun in foam form and it still is good with loads of miles on it and there are more out there that have tried it and love it than those who can't strike a deal with it it's one of the most bouncy and energetic running shoes that i've ever tried out on the channel and it's certainly worth picking up right now because there's loads of discounts on it seemingly with the Primex Strung 2 set to drop very soon. Some people might say that it's just too easy, in fact, running in that shoe, but for fun and enjoyment, there's very few other things that even get close to it. So we're kind of into 2023 now, and there's all sorts of shoes that I've got in for testing right now. The Asics Super Blast is one of those that's really hitting the spot for me. Need to get some more miles into this one. I'm loving the Boston 12 from Adidas and the Puma Magnify Nitro 2. Also the Forever Run Nitro as well. We'll see what comes out on top as we move towards 2024. So that's some of the best ever shoes, or at least some of my favorites, I guess, that I've reviewed on the channel. Like four or five years of reviewing shoes and those really rise to the top. What are your personal favorites from this period and why? Let the runners know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude today comes from the White Stripes with White Blood Cells. One of the most complete White Stripes albums, I think. It covers kind of all of the different genres and styles of music that they used to do. But my favorite track on the album is actually something that was used in a film as well. One of my favourite films, in fact, Napoleon Dynamite. The title section at the start of the film features the White Stripes track, We're Going To Be Friends, which is literally just on acoustic guitar with a vocal. It captures the actual mood and intention of the film perfectly, really. All about kind of outsiders and 
having this sort of detachment from you know the normal people i suppose it's a film that really struck a chord with me mainly because i love the white stripes as well and i could see the intent of the song and it was used perfectly here there's some fantastic tunes on white blood cells like i said it is one of the best white stripes albums from start to finish i suppose okay thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane Help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button, also giving this video a thumbs up like, and dropping us a super thanks for some ad hoc support. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.